Restaurant Radio. And now is one of our Flavor HD segments, Hannah Stanley, Dane Neal. We've got on the line with us now, he is a visionary. He is a guy who not only uh, is in the jet set, but also mingles with uh, celebrities, superstars, and makes one of the greatest tequilas out there. It is the founder of Tequila Avion, Ken Austin. Ken, welcome to the show. Thanks. Great to be here. Now, Ken, you look at what you do whenever you're going to start a new brand. The hardest thing to get and people try to get product placement, brand awareness. You had all of that in the beginning with placement on Entourage. How does something like that happen? Well, you know, sometimes in, in life, you know, it's uh, as people say, it's who you know. Uh, not necessarily what you know. And uh, in the case of Avion, my partner and I uh, are very close friends with Doug Ellen, the creator and writer of Entourage. So it really happened in a, in a very natural way, friends doing something for friends, where Doug was looking for a storyline for Turtle and Vin uh, on the show. He didn't like the storyline for the, the car service that he was doing in season seven. And we said to him, we were in Nantucket, we said to him, why don't you put our tequila on that we're launching? And he said, oh, he thought that was a great idea. And then lo and behold, it was in the, it was in the script. We didn't pay anything for it, but it was one of those, you know, get, get out of jail free kind of thing. So it really was kind of a cooperative thing. It, he was looking for it. You wanted product placement and, and everybody just kind of came together. Yeah, it really, as I say, it was just very, very natural. And it, he really liked the storyline. He said, look, you know, the guys are tequila. Um, it's, you know, tequila's fun. Uh, tequila is sort of different, and uh, that's that's really where it went. In his mind, he's so brilliant. He literally had the storyline and season seven and eight in his mind as we sat uh, in Nantucket. Within two minutes, he knew exactly how it was going to go. Now, how much interaction and back and forth did he go with you? Because it's kind of a scary thing. One thing, it's great to have you know your brand out there, but still in its infancy to be kind of showcased and highlighted. Was did you have a lot of input on let's make it do this or make it do that? Or I mean, were there any conflicts with the storyline and what you guys were doing? Yeah, it's a, it's a great, great question, Dane. You know, when, when uh, initially Doug said, come out to California, you'll spend time with me and Allie, and you'll tell us really about the business. And he just wanted to understand the business itself. How does it work with, you know, restaurants and bars? How does it work with liquor stores? Um, and he wanted to understand how the product was made and so on. But once I did that with them for about two days, they then said, go home and don't call us again. <laughs> there was, you know, there was a lot of risk, and it's a great thing about being a young company, a new company, and entrepreneurs where you can take risk. A big company would never have done this because of the lawyers um, right. and the, the other folks would have said, you know what, we need to see everything. I didn't see anything, and my partner Kenny didn't see anything, uh, which was really great. But it, it was risk, but, you know, we knew it was a friend, and not, we just said to him, just don't hurt us. And, uh, you know, <laughs> lo and behold, we had Sasha Gray, a porn star, uh, we had Vinny doing drugs, and we had Avion. So uh, <laughs> if I went back in time, I would I would have uh, you know cringed. But when it happened, it was very natural, and it worked. And obviously, you know, you got me on the phone now because it had something to do with entourage. That's for sure. Definitely. Now, when this first hit, we've talked in the past about the Oprah effect on products. Did you guys definitely see the spike immediately with this show, or or was it a more natural ramp up? You know, it's, it's another, it's a great question. When we first, you know, we only launched New York and California. Right. Uh, and we launched literally a month, not even a month before it was on the show. So the problem, actually, that we faced was that people were going into stores in places like, you know, Chicago and Florida and Texas and many other states and looking for it and not even knowing it was real. Um, and many people <laughs> thought it was made up for the show, which was problematic in a lot of ways because people today don't even know that Avion is real and what an amazing product it is. The, the best tequila in the world, the smoothest tequila, but you would never know because you saw it on a show and it just didn't exist in your mind prior to seeing it on Entourage. So it was a blessing in many ways and it also, we have to work real hard now to convince people that it's real and now they go into in the market, they see it and they, sort, they really light up. Well, even when you got great products that are awesome that people love and congratulations on the double gold in San Francisco, that's high Thank praise. You. Thank you. And that certainly gives like the, the credibility to all the other good things for it. But even when you have all those things. The toughest thing to get is to get bartenders on the ground to like it, to, to be ambassadors for it, and to get that distribution, but you ended up getting that. Yeah, totally. And bartend the best part about this, and, you know, I think many of us were bartenders, you know, coming up, and I tended bar to pay my way, you know, pay for the, you know, the new tires on the car um, <laughs> when I was younger. And the thing is that bartenders, when they taste Avion, they actually do see a difference. It really is resonating with them. Uh, the tougher part has been sort of what they call the mixology community, where they're very into sort of the homegrown stories. And here, because our friend put us on TV, some of them initially were like, well, you know, we're not sure if this was made for TV tequila, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But when they taste it, and we won double gold in San Francisco 
for a new brand, and we won the best margarita in the world two months ago uh, in Arizona by wow. real judges. Awesome. Um, it really, though, even the cynical people now are coming on and saying, man, this is great tequila. It's really smooth. So, you know, we're winning now the right way. And with the smoothness of it, too, it makes it incredibly versatile because you're able to have it as a sipping tequila, which is kind of a, a newer thing I'm seeing with friends is they're actually sipping this now instead of just burying it inside of a, a very fruity margarita. Exactly. Most people drink, consume tequila in either shots or margaritas. And what people are realizing now is you, you can mix Avion the same way you would mix any vodka that is tasteless, colorless, odorless. Um, and it actually gives it a much better flavor. So, you know, mix it whether it's with lemonade or mix it in a cocktail that is, you know, a traditional cocktail that you'd put whiskey in or bourbon in or vodka in, and it actually works very, very well. And people are, you know, younger people now are all about discovery and sort of charting their own path versus being told what to do. And we're seeing a lot of that coming on with Avion and, and the, mix, the mixability of it because of the way we filter it and the way we cook the agave. It's very, very versatile. Well, the backstory of, of how the whole thing started, at least soon after the birth, is is great. Of interest, it's going to get you some interviews, it's going to get you some exposure, and certainly you know, Entourage is a great way to go. But when you sit down with some of those people, some of the either the people at the at the at the contest, at the exhibitions, and certainly with the bartenders, one of the backstories that I'm sure you've got to share is this: this isn't something that's just a marketing ploy, or even that you love tequila. I guess uh, it's been a lifelong dream for you to be able to create great tequila, and that that's huge in and of itself. Yeah, and, and it really was a dream for me, you know, and I have been dreaming about doing this for, you know, over 20 years, that I was going to launch a brand, and I, I've loved tequila for a long, long time, even when tequila wasn't good, and there's still a lot of tequilas out there that are not good. <laughs> yes. um, so there is a real story. There are, there are real humans behind this brand that really care, and I go out every single night and every day, talk to bartenders and retailers, and we're trying to get the story out there about this is, this is really a passion play for me. It's, you know, as I told Jim Cramer on CNBC, this isn't Get Rich Quick, uh, and he said to me, nothing wrong with getting rich quick. But for me, it's really not about right. that. It's about actually creating a brand that will, 50 years from now, will be a household name. Uh, and 100 years from now, my grandkids will talk about, you know, their granddad that launched this brand. Well, how hard was that? Like, once you knew that you wanted to do it and having that background on the beverage side, I mean, sure, you knew a lot of the moving parts that would be necessary for it. But, but how far? In your mind, you wanted to do something. You wanted to make it great. But how hard was it to put all those pieces together? Uh, Great question, Dane. You know, I, I really I knew a lot about the front end because when I got out of school, I worked for Gallo and I worked for Seagram, so I understood the front end. I had no idea how you made glass corks. I knew the tequila was from agave, uh, but I didn't even understand really the operating side. And I went to Mexico literally blind. Uh, and my wife said to me, you know, you're going to go there, you're going to get killed. And she sort of wink, wink, you know, if it happens, it happens kind of thing. Um, and, uh, oh, no, I, that would be no, terrible. No, that's only 49% of her wanted me to not come back. All right, right. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but in any case, on a serious note, I mean, I went there and I really was clueless. And I just figured it out. And it, it just, it's one of those things where you just say you hear it all the time about entrepreneurs and just the will and the ability to visualize something happening. I just went, and I wasn't going to give up. And fortunately, I do speak enough Spanish to get out of jail. Um, and uh, I just found the right place. You know, <laughs> or get into it. <laughs> or get in, yeah, getting into it is, is sometimes is more fun than getting out. Yeah. Um, but it really, it really was something of just trial and error and figuring it out and creating my own recipes with the master distiller in Mexico and it, saying there is no way I'm going to accept except the burn that tequila is known for, that we're going to make this smoother than any other tequila, and just fighting through it. But I really was not an expert on the side of the back end. The front end, uh, the consumer side, that's what I love. Um, but it really wasn't easy, and it goes to prove that anyone can do anything. And I, it's, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it really is, because if I was able to, the hardest spirit to make in the world is tequila. You know, it takes eight years for an agave plant to grow, one plant to grow. It's not easy. So I took the hardest spirit there is in the world to make with a crossing the border. You can only produce it there. You can only bottle it in Jalisco, Mexico. So all the barriers were there, and we broke through, which is the greatest feeling. Wow. It started world famous, and now it is award winning. For those people that want to find more information about you, your story, and what goes into Tequila Avion, where can they go? Uh, they can go to our, either our website, tequilaavion.com. We're on Facebook, Tequila Avion, and we're on Twitter, at Tequila Avion. Uh, we made it very simple for everyone. You know, we, we just we love our fans on Facebook. I respond to everyone on Twitter. I respond. I'm on, you know, 24 7. So it's really Don't about say the people. That. Again, don't say that. You you need your sleep, I mean, especially if you're going to plan another expedition to Mexico. Oh, 
sleep is overrated. You know that. <laughs> it's, it's a business you're in. You can't sleep. So yeah. last thing, what, what's next uh, in media exposure-wise? Do you have all you need, or are you going to do a Super Bowl commercial? What are we going to see? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, should, I, should, I, should, I should lie to you and tell you we're going to be on the Super Bowl and spend $3 million, but we're not. no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I wish we could. Uh, that was, then I woke up. But uh, we're, we're going to continue to do a lot more. The key is getting liquid on lips, getting people to try Avion and falling in love with it and understanding that, you know what, there were tequilas that they loved up to this point. Avion is the one they're going to love going forward. And it's really about touching as many humans as, as I can and our team can and getting the liquid on their lips for them to see how great this product is. Ken Austin, Tequila Avion, can't thank you enough for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It was great. Restaurant Radio.